I'm Connie Buck, president of Elon University, and I'm joined by Lee Rainey, who spent 24 years leading internet and technology research at the Pew Research Center. Lee recently retired from Pew and has joined Elon as inaugural director of our new Imagining the Digital Future Center. Lee, welcome to Elon. So I know that you and your Elon colleague, uh, Professor Jana Anderson, have been working on this report for the past nine months. It's exciting, it's a first, a major study on uh, AI. And so I wanna ask you, how is this different from other recent research on AI that we've seen out there? We think that the extra value we're adding in this report involves two things. First of all, we've canvassed scores and scores of experts about the impact of AI on both individuals and on societal systems. But we also combined it with a public opinion poll of United States adults, representative sample of all adults in the United States on some of those same questions. So we're able to do comparative work looking at the expert answers and the civilian answers. And we think that the, the combination of the two is a, is a wonderful sweet spot of both quantitative work, this polling results, with the deep qualitative work that the experts are giving us with their own predictions about the wave of the future. So we think we've asked different kinds of questions. We've asked about things like politics and elections and about civility and about the impact on health systems and higher education. So we think we've asked a variety of questions that are new, but we've also done it in a new way. That's really interesting because sometimes, uh, it, because the two do um, provide different perspectives. I remember some of the early work um, with Pew and the forecasting uh, that was being done about the internet and the impact of the internet. And I remember thinking, could that ever happen? You know, it, it, it created uh, scenarios that really caused you to pause and reflect. And then to hear um, how, where the public is in all of this at the same time you're hearing these ideas, I think the juxtaposition is powerful and will gain new insights. So tell me, just give me a little taste. What does the public opinion poll tell you about how Americans are feeling about these new technologies of AI and chat GPT that are in the headlines? First of all, in the past year, public awareness has just rocketed up. There were people that we at Pew were asking about it just 18 months ago, two years ago. Awareness was pretty low. This was all taking place in the shadows in American life. Well, the rise of chat GPT and other language models has just burst onto the scene and b made the public a lot more aware of this stuff. And they've got a mixed reaction. Part of it just freaks them out. There are now tools that do the same things with cognitive power that humans can do. In the past, tools have always replaced human um, uh, you know, physical power. This is the first time we've encountered technologies that are actually doing the same kind of brain work that humans do. So Americans, like a lot of people around the world, are nervous about this, and yet, they can anticipate some, and are beginning to see, some changes that they think are for the good. For instance, they think that healthcare systems, diagnostics, public uh, data analysis uh, for, for public health purposes and things like that, they're all for these tools doing the analytics on that that are much faster, and sometimes much more accurate than humans can do. So there's a really mixed picture, which is part of the really interesting story that we're telling. It's not a all good or all bad situation with public opinion. It's very nuanced, sometimes scary, but a lot of ways that people are showing some signs of hope too. I think when we hear about all of the uses as a, in the public, in the news, and on social media that people are using AI and chat GPT for, it's like we realize, I know I am, I'm, going, I'm pausing at how I'm spending my time thinking, could, chat, could artificial intelligence actually create my grocery list <laughs> without me, you know? So thinking about how I use my time differently, and are there ways that chat GPT or a generative AI could help? And so many people are writing about this and the future impact uh, on our lives. So can you share some of the major themes that you're seeing emerge in all of the predictions and forecasting by the experts? I think there's one that just pops very dramatically in the kinds of answers we got from the experts, and it's that we're gonna have to reimagine what it is to be a human being. 
So our jobs are going to change, our leisure time is going to change, our relationships with others is going to change, our relationships with institutions is going to change. And so there's a very palpable sense among the experts that fundamental things like human intelligence, human creativity, and things like that are going to be transformed by these tools. And it's things that we used to think were uniquely human are no longer. So that's, that's part of the big story here. The, Kiss and cousin of that thought, of course, is that the major institutions and systems that society has built to deal with public uh, action and solving problems and getting along with each other, are that's all up for grabs too now. They're saying basically we have to reimagine, reinvent, and sometimes just can existing institutions for institutions that can exploit these tools in a little bit better way. We're going to have to create new norms about how to be with each other and be with big organizations as these things roll through the culture. It really is. It gives you pause as you start to think structurally the way our cities are designed with, you know, town halls and city councils and referendums and you just it it does give you pause about systems. Well, I, I'm going to turn the tables now on you because you're in the thick of this. I'm, I'm just so conscious of the ways in which you are wrestling with these issues right now in major ways on campus. So I'm kind of interested in your sense of where things stand with artificial intelligence, how it's rolling through campus culture, and where it might be heading. One point you made, and I think this is true, is that the internet taught us so many important lessons about technology adoption and uh, how it changed our world. This is at an accelerated pace. Already, um, it's in the water. People talking, just like you said, AI, chat GPT, and, and uh, it's been adopted so quickly when you think about other technologies. So it is definitely here in the middle of university life. And it's caused us to start thinking more about how you actually learn and what is the value of the learning process. So many people would say, well, I thought all that research I was doing where I was reading and highlighting and picking out those major themes was actually teaching me. And now ChatGPT or AI can actually tell you these are the four major themes in this article. And they can do it in 20 seconds. So what used to take a student three or four hours can now, you know, in 20 seconds, these are the most important ideas in this article. So it's a balance of how we use our classroom time uh, in the teaching and learning and our out of classroom time. And then of course, we want to prepare students to be ethical leaders uh, on all time, right? As ethical leaders. And so now AI is a topic they'll have to tackle as they think about the ethics of of um, what we use this technology for and not for, the uh, controls, the parameters that we put on personally in our lives, and, um, and then to think about it in civil society, and most importantly, how it affects our democracy, you know, our ability to sustain our democracy. Uh, and so no small order on a, a generation that's uh, uh, actually seen so much change in their short lives. Um, between uh, the pandemic, the rise of social media, and uh, so they're, they're already in a really disrupted state, and here comes a new, a new uh, technology. So thank you for asking that. Uh, I, I think higher ed is, is actually very aggressive because they realize the impact of this as, we, as I go around the country and talk to others around the world in higher education. It's, it's kind of hard to think of another job besides college president that's more in the thick of these incredibly complicated and incredibly demanding of foresight kind of jobs. So anyway, I, hope, I wish you luck as you go through this. Um, over the years, Elon studies have, um, you know, they've also, the studies you've done with Imagining the Internet have provided some uh, early, some predictions about things. Are there things you learned from that work that you're applying to the forecasting of AI that you're seeing the same trends with the experts? It, it's so interesting because I, I've gone back to the, some of the early questions we were asking about the impact of search engines. You know, in 2002, 2003, 2004. Yeah, if you can just ask Google, will we need a library? <laughs> Search, replace, replace Google with AI and, and ask similar things. The process of how these technologies get normalized in people's lives. It seems freaky. It seems odd. It seems hard to do in, on, on first encounter. And yet now, 90 
percent of American adults and 95 percent of American teenagers just think that having a smartphone is a normal, ordinary part of life. They wouldn't probably even call it technology. So we're learning how to adapt the language from some of our earlier studies about technology and about forecasting the future and applying them here. We're also trying to think through um, how these technologies will have a broader systems impact. A lot of our questions were focused in the early days about individual impacts and things like that. I think these technologies demand of us now that we think systems wise as well as at the individual level. Mm -hmm. It really is fascinating. So how can people dig into this data and learn more? Well, we're, we're building out a wonderful website that not only has this new material in it that we've been talking about, but it has the 48 other reports that we issued during the course of the previous work. Um, we hope that they'll find points of interest. And they'll engage with us. I'd love to hear from people who have good ideas about this stuff or would like me to talk more about some of the findings that are myster mysterious to them or are, might require further elaboration and things like that. So we hope that people will be people in this age of artificial intelligence and engage with others, uh, ask questions, offer their expertise, and learn from the things that we are trying to pull together for them. I do think creating community is really critical at this point because we're learning so much from each other. Um, and uh, having a community of people, in my case, higher ed, that are all, you know, has, is really powerful as I learn lessons and um, globally as universities are responding. So the community piece, I agree, um, is going to be a great driver of the work. So what's next? What's, what have you queued up right behind this study? We're going to do a lot of listening about the, the kinds of things that make sense to study. Of course, the, some of the things that are on our mind relate to how artificial intelligence is going to be combined with augmented uh, reality. You know, you're going to walk around with these goggles and, and with these glasses and these contact lenses that are going to give you feedback with lots of data in it about the environment you're in who you're talking with, what building you're sitting in, and things like that. So the, the merger of those things, and of course the merger of artificial intelligence with things in your body is, uh, is absolutely going to happen. These experts don't even think that's a question worth wondering about because it's so obvious that it's going to happen. The other thing that's going to happen is how we negotiate all of the ways in which this changes us as human beings. Yeah, exciting. So I'm looking forward to uh, hosting this at Elon and uh, also just engaging and seeing where this takes us. Really critical at this juncture in world history uh, with the launch of generative AI. So thanks for sharing the results of your new research and for joining us at Elon as the inaugural director of the Imagining the Digital Future Center. Thanks, Lee. Thanks.